Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie and I'm a nerdy flute player, which means I do covers of video game, anime, TV, film, music, and if all of all of that sounds interesting, there will be a link in the cards above that has links to all of my music videos and as well as in the description below, you can find all of my music on all of the streaming services. Today's video is a little bit different. This is part one of a two-part video series on which I did a col- <laughs> on on which? Of which I did a collab with Savvy from Savvy's Writes Books, as well as Gail Gallagher, and you can find her over on Instagram. I will leave links to both of uh, both of them in the description below where you can check them out. But this whole thing was kind of kicked off when Savvy did a video on the author to business guru pipeline and how she was kind of seeing the author world going along the route of not making money from being an author, but f making money for teaching other people how to make money to be an author. And it kind of sparked something that I was kind of seeing in some of the music groups that I'm part of in the discussion. And Gail also being a musician was kind of seeing similar things. And we just kind of, we kind of got talking about how you know, people are saying sell courses as a way to make money and what makes a good course and what doesn't make a good course and are courses even helpful. So this is a pretty broad discussion. We talked for two hours and we'll, so I will split it up, but it was a really good discussion and I wanted to share it here. So yeah, I will leave timestamps to the best of my ability in the description box below, as well as the pinned comment. But our conversation kind of went a little all over the place and talked a little bit about everything. But overall, it's just kind of determining what makes a course, what, what makes a good course, what doesn't make a good course, and kind of speaking on our experiences with various courses and trying to make money as a freelance artist or author in Savvy's case. So yeah, if that sounds interesting, let's dive in. All right. So everyone, this is, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie Shesko. I am a nerdy flute player, which means I do covers of video game, anime, TV, film, music. If that interests you, I will leave a link in the cards to all of my cover songs. And today I am joined by Gail Gallagher and Sal Sally, <laughs> Sally, <laughs> Sally, like, is it Lizer? Lizer? Yeah, Lizer. Lizer, okay. Yeah. And Savvy, Savvy Lizer. And we kind of are talking about how at least Gail and I are seeing the music industry go the way that Savvy has saw the book industry go, where you're not making money from your craft, but you're making money from teaching others how to make money at their craft or, you know, kind of selling courses and becoming a business guru and not a producer of content. So that's kind of what sparked this. Savvy had a fantastic video. I will link that in the cards and in the description below because that kind of started this, my whole rabbit hole tangent of this and my whole ranting that I've done to Mike, poor Mike, because <laughs> <laughs> about this. Um, and it's definitely something that I wanted to put on my channel because it's, as someone who is new-ish to music, I've been doing this for a couple of years now and still the growing is slow as a result, I think. And um, I've taken a couple of courses. It's very frustrating to me that like everything has now become, well, just make a course and you'll make money. And it's like, well, I didn't set out to make a course. I didn't set out to teach. Well, I do teach. I have a private studio, but... That's not what I was here to do. So anyway, so Savvy, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Savvy. My YouTube channel is Savvy Writes Books. On my channel, I talk about the intersection of books and business because that's kind of how my channel is going. I'm an author and a business owner, and I've noticed a lot about uh, how the author world has become more entrepreneurial over the years and how those worlds are intersecting a lot. And I do a lot of reviews of bad business self-help books, and that's probably what people watch me most for. <laughs> uh, but that's that's my channel, and I'm the co-host of the channel Your Morning Guru, which is where I met Katie and Gail because they were regular. They actually did the music for our show. That's pretty cool. I, there's a connection there. <laughs> so there's I host a morning show with my friend called Your Morning Guru every weekday morning at 8 a.m. Central Time. And if you watch it, you'll hear our introduction song is Katie playing the flute. That's her music, and then our theme song is Gail's theme song that she wrote and performed. And I'm just like, oh, this is great. We're all coming together. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then Gail, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm Gail Gallagher. I'm a singer songwriter, composer, music producer, teacher, podcast host. Um, I, in addition to all the things, I host a podcast uh, called Faith and What Resonates that ex explores the intersection of creativity and spirituality from my Unitarian Universalist lens. All that is its own topic. Um, and I have, so I've been in the music and theater scene for about 10 years, and I have spent the course of the pandemic uh, in several online coaching communities and have was in the place of maybe I should start an online course uh, and then realize that uh, what I like about teaching is in-person contact and why would I want to scale that. Um, and there were many layers to that discovery, which I will probably go into. But yeah, I'm very excited yeah. to have this conversation. I, I agree. So. Um... Yeah, so like I said, I saw Savvy's video on how she's been seeing that the author world has kind of gone to like this business guru. So Savvy, if you want to give like a little rundown of that video, because you'll be able to say it much better than, than me paraphrasing. So I made this video a couple months ago called the author to business guru pipeline, uh, because I was noticing this trend of like, uh, so many people starting off with dreams in the in the literary world are wanting to go into being an author and then along the way uh, they end up selling these courses to other writers or selling services on how to get your books out there and it's not it's not exactly the same as what we see in MLMs but there's a little bit of an element to like this uh, trying to make money on one thing but having to make money by someone else who wants to do that thing paying you and then someone else who wants to do that thing paying them they're like it could easily become a pyramid over time so I was talking about that a little bit um, because I just seen it happen over and over. And I, I kind of agree with you guys about teaching because I also I used to teach creative writing workshops to kids before the pandemic happened. And that was a big thing that I love to do uh, because I, I think to an extent, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to teach people if teaching is something that you care about. It's, it's that this whole idea that like just because you love doing something doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good at teaching it to other people. And I also did this other video with the channel The Recovering Hunbot, who's a wonderful anti-MLM creation channel. And she and I, she has a master's degree in instructional design. So she actually is the person designing courses for uh, employers to give to their employees for training or things like that. And she and I did this video where we looked at all these business guru courses, like we looked at Grant Cardone's courses, we looked at Rachel Hollis's courses, we looked at this like self publishing school course that I had interviewed someone who had had a bad experience with them. So we looked at all of these courses and we talked about how, you know, the main problem here is that this isn't really based on any type of pedagogy this isn't really based on like what you'd want to teach like if you want to teach someone something it's because you should understand how people learn you should have an understanding of how to work with students you should have learning goals and checkpoints and ways to measure how much the learning was successful generally there should be some level of student and teacher feedback and back and forth conversation but a lot of what people are selling as courses is really just like basically a book but they're sending it to you in pdfs and videos because it's a one-way communication and that doesn't work very well so that's the problem i started noticing was a lot of authors are getting pressured like oh you're not making enough money just selling books because I could I could spend all day talking about why it's difficult oh, yeah. to make money selling books. But it's like, oh, you're not making enough with that. Well, you can create a course where it's, oh, sorry about Chewy. <laughs> the idea behind the course is that it's supposed to be like easy to replicate because you can just send the same thing to a ton of people. Well, that's not what a course should be, right? That's, if you're writing and selling books, that's what a book should be. But it almost seems like people are taking what's in a book, breaking it up to make it look like a course because like our market tries to price classes at a higher price than books. And for a yeah. good reason, because courses are supposed to involve professor and student feedback, and they're supposed to involve a lot more one-on-one -on -one interaction, but you're not giving that. You're calling something a course and pricing it at the level of like a community college class, but you're providing someone basically a book. So you're charging them like 10 to 100 times as much as it would normally cost. Uh, and then <clears throat> it almost seems like you, other people are trying to pressure each other to do that too. And I just, I really hate seeing it go in that direction. I don't have a problem with writing courses. I got a master's in writing and publishing. So like, obviously I've taken many writing courses, but I've taken them like with professors who will give me feedback and things like that. And I don't mind paying people 
for advice if they're an expert. And I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to teach a class online, but you have to teach a class because you want to teach a class, not because you feel that like you can't make enough money unless you're overpricing something that really, the material doesn't really fit that medium. Or what but, I'm hearing as diversifying your income stream. Diversifying mm -hmm. your income stream, which to be fair, I diversify my income streams. And I think that's right, yeah. important because like, I've talked about this before too. I currently, my YouTube channel is doing well and I'm making decent money from YouTube and that's great. But I don't own YouTube, Google owns YouTube. So one day Google can say, hey, actually nobody's making money on YouTube anymore. They could just decide that at the drop of a hat. And it's important that I also have, I have my books that I sell. I have, and I also make sure I don't exclusively sell my books through Amazon. A few of my books are currently Amazon exclusive, but like Forever Home Friends, which is my biggest thing, primarily is sold through my own website. And so it's like, what are the chances that Google, Shopify, Amazon, they're all going to shut down at once. Very low. That's why it's good to <laughs> diversify all of those things and not rely solely on something that's owned by one other company. So I do have some agreement with that, with diversifying your income stream, but it's got to be because it fits your overall career goals and the overall goals of what your actual customer wants, not because of like, I don't know, because you think you can manipulate people into making money are into making money off of manipulating people into thinking that they need your advice. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so go ahead, yes. Okay, so let's, let's talk about manip <laughs> manipulation. Yeah. Um, so yes, 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 yes. Um, as somebody who has been down many a funnel, and even though our marketing funnel, like people's oh, email yeah. lists and all this stuff. And, and it have, I've in fact taken a course on how to build email funnels. So I know what the, what the tricks are. <laughs> That's like a and funnel I, in a funnel. <laughs> I, and, and, and I'll still go down the funnels. I'll be like, oh, this is your rise series. So I'm going to get like an email a day for the next five days while you're selling mm -hmm. this thing. And then, you know, like, like yeah. I know the systems, uh, and it, what annoys me. So there's a few different things that annoy me. I'm going to breathe. Um, so first of all, um, within the, the sort of the world of musicians selling courses to other musicians, there's like the same group of people that are in all of the same courses. And there usually there's a Facebook group that's like a discussion group that goes with the course. Yep. And so, mm -hmm. so there is that community element, but you see everybody signing up and they all share their webinars within their different groups, which is cool that there are these online communities and there are, um, and I've, I've been in some really good programs and stuff like that. But the thing that got me when I was thinking about running a course was the 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 courses on how to market the courses oh god that's where it's that, a pyramid yeah yes and and the courses that market the courses are like all right so highlight people's pain points who is your <sighs> ideal person yada 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 and on and just knowing that you're one you're highlighting people's pain points and you're like trying to um yeah like you're 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 the, the tactics are specifically like, and they word it in nice ways, like, like, what is the problem that your course can solve and demonstrate how you can solve that problem? Great, great and good. But like, and then it's like, okay, and then run Facebook ads. Um, and that it's just so problematic because, um, part of my pandemic and part of my pandemic journey has been, been like, oh, uh, I was in a sad place and then I clicked on all these ads. Isn't that interesting? Maybe we shouldn't have yeah. a Facebook feed anymore. <laughs> Dude, if I never hear the word webinar again, it'll be too soon. Oh my God. <laughs> Not stand. And here, join the webinar. It's all, they yeah. always say it's a live webinar and it's uh -huh. never a live webinar. It's always a pre-recorded webinar. With they musicians, never it is often a live webinar. Oh, okay. Well, like, I'll give I, musicians a benefit. Yeah. To tell like, them. like the, a lot of the courses I go to, it is at least a live webinar webinar or mm -hmm. I do love a good three-day challenge like a, a three-day challenge where it's like this is a preview of the course and then there's a pitch at the end and everybody's we've done this before we know there's a pitch at the end there's always a pitch there's always a pitch <laughs> at the end um so like there's but but when you're not wise to it and you are in a place where you're impulsively buying courses because like you think this course is going to solve all your problems yeah. like i've seen people get in those rabbit holes and i'm in courses with them and i see that they bought this other course and they're like well this was really expensive but i bought it and i'm just like 
Yeah. And I think like, the the problem too that I find with some of this marketing is it's marketing specifically if you have a product or if you have a course, which as a musician, and I would think somewhat with just an author producing a book, I'm not really solving a pain point. I'm making pretty music. So like, how do I effectively, like that's what I have yet to have anyone tell me. How do I effectively market something that is just pure entertainment? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, how do you solve a, like, solve a problem i mean like yeah i can say life sucks so listen to my music but right that doesn't and quite make sense. Work. like you can look for like for me like okay we've got cancel sean boston right i think a you know a pain point it's hard to d determine the pain point but more so i'm looking at what gap does it fill right because right. it's like when i had wrote cancel sean boston with rk and we were like there really aren't a lot of like books about internet drama but everyone's very invested in internet drama all yes. the time e and book people especially book twitter is a mess every five minutes <laughs> so it's like okay so like a book about internet drama seems like a thing people would like and especially if we live streamed it so that was kind of like finding the gap same thing when i wrote savvy business owner it's like i spent all day complaining online about how i don't like certain types of business books like but and people keep asking me for business advice. So I'm like, okay, clearly there are people who want my business advice and there are people who agree that the way current business books are written is unhelpful. So like right. I should attempt to like, that's people's pain point is like, mm -hmm. they need this business advice, but don't want to read it from these books that do it like in a stupid way like this. So I should try to do my own. And whether that accomplished that or not is up to the reader to decide. But I, uh, I think that there was a level of trying to find the pain point and market it there. And I do that with like a lot of my books too, is like when I've been, uh, you know, with 90s kids, I've been telling everyone it's lesbian Back to the Future. So I'm like, everyone who likes Back to the Future, wouldn't you rather see it with lesbians? <laughs> Not necessarily. No, I love Back to the Future. But my point is like, there's, there's a way to like show people that like there's a thing that they might need and it's there. So like, yeah. Maybe that's I, what I need a course on because so I am not good at it. Like, I can recommend <laughs> several. Um. It's like, I get what you're saying. It's like yeah. some people try to come at it where it's like you have to solve a negative problem. Like there has to be something that's yeah. actively hurting your life and this is going to actively solve it. And that's not how entertainment usually is. It's like, yeah. it's going to take you to positive of neutral. So you need to show people like, how do I want to get to the positive side of neutral? At least that's right. how I've been doing it in my book marketing. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Well, and I think with, with fan base building, like a, a lot of it is um, like, find yeah finding out what they what they like engaging with it and it and and sort of figuring out how you can plug in with like different communities like there's a lot more it, it's really just going to depend on your genre and your niche and all that stuff and that is like a different thing and like within the 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 language that comes out in music marketing like there's there's all these like different um like like it really, it there's no one size fits all, and right. coaching programs that are like here's the one size fits all, it's just does not work. And also like, I think with the with the courses and with music marketing, like in all of these things, uh, you gotta like I wish that in the promotion they communicated like this is about where you need to be in your career. If I'm speaking to you about this, and not like you know, we're looking for people who want to work hard. And I'm like, yeah, this, you know? there's just something to be said for the target audience. And that's a reason that courses often fail is they try to be one size fits all. When in reality, someone who's brand new to marketing is going to need a completely different course than someone who's been trying out different techniques for a year. And someone who's into marketing in this specific style of music is going to need a different course than someone who's trying to market. Like, I don't know if you're marketing like your indie rock music and you're playing like local shows at certain things, you're going to want to market your music differently than if you're doing what Katie's doing and you, you're a video game streamer on Twitch and you play video game covers and music you might have a lot of audience crossover but the the reason that the audience is looking for that is different and so the same yeah. marketing course isn't necessarily going to make it work in the same way and i think that's where a lot of the course issues come in is that these they advertise like you said as a one size fits all but when you delve in very rarely do you get any opportunity with the course creator to say okay i i see what you're saying but how does that apply to me? I'm not seeing how we could, like how this is applying to me specifically. They don't even offer an opportunity to have a conversation with you. And I think like, 
even if, if that was an add-on at some point, because like mm-hmm. I took a course and it was pretty good. It was like an overview of like, okay, I want to be a musician. How do I start being a musician and making money? And like it talked like, here's the microphones. If you want to do music videos, here's the ty- different types of camera. Like here's a bunch of different cameras and here's what the effect is. Here's the basics of video editing. Here's the basics of like, if you want to set a home studio, here's what you should probably have. And like the basics of audio editing and stuff like that. It's the very, very basic, but like, I think a lot of people took the course thinking that there would be a little bit more um, feedback from the course creator. Yeah. Because she's very famous, and I think, I know, I partially bought it because, like, I listened to her music for a long time, and I was like, she's doing what I want to do, so, yeah, it makes sense that I would want to learn from someone who is doing exactly what I want to do, but the, the feedback is not really there, and sometimes when it is, it's very, it's not helpful, If that makes sense. So then you're kind of feeling like, well, I could have gotten all this information for free elsewhere. Why did I spend money on this? Yes. And that's kind of like how I feel like a lot of courses are. It's like, okay. (laughs) Hi. Aw, puppy. Like, what? Um, So, yeah, I just, I feel like, and, and then, you know, when there was, when there was talk of like, okay, I've been doing all the things that this course has said and I'm not really seeing any results or the results are coming painfully slow. What, what am I doing wrong? It's just like, well, maybe your product isn't good enough Mm. or maybe Mm. you haven't tried this or that. And so like, okay, well, first off, I relate to the person who made this post because we talk frequently. Second off, her, I know her product's good enough. And -hmm. third off, I know she's already tried all of that. So... Can we get a little bit more from someone? And it's just like, how do you not even want to help the people that have spent money in your course? Like, how do you not even like offer a collab? How do you not even offer promotion? How do you not even like do anything more than just a Facebook post once a month for the people that have dropped a lot of money on this? And like answering, uh, answering, like you answer questions once a month. Like, I, so I don't want to be that person, but the courses that the, the membership communities that I am, which I'm in, which are actually more like membership communities with course elements do have a a lot more of those, but like the ones that work are the ones where you do have that feedback with, with the person and like, uh, and like, uh, and in one of my groups, like the, the coach has an album out and we like did a mega uh collab on one of her tracks and so like everybody submitted that's really cool yeah um, okay well i'm gonna need the name of this okay so this is a good yes i i told katie i would only uh name people i like uh so amplify community cheryl b engelhart is the artist and uh yeah lovely 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 um, but, uh, but, but what's great about that community too, is it like, she meets you where you're at. So it's, it's like the idea is you're amplifying whatever, whatever level you're at. And so, so that's, that's approachable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there, there are sometimes there are things I don't always, I don't always vibe with and maybe that's a block and maybe that's just what it is. <laughs> um, right. you know, <laughs> right. But, but the thing yeah. is. I think what really irked me was the mm-hmm. fact that we joined this course to become musicians. We wanted to make a living being musicians. Mm-hmm. And when your suggestion is possibly build a course or teach as a way to do that, it's like, no, that's not what I joined this course for. Mm-hmm. I joined this course to be a musician. I didn't join this course to be told that if I want to make money, I have to make a course or teach. Well, yeah. do you know like that person who does, whose course you bought, who I assume is also very successful as a musician, is yes. she, do you know if she's making a significant amount of her income from the course? Because it might be that that's what's supplemented her income and that's the best thing she knows to tell you. Uh, I mean, the course has only 
two years old. A year oh, and a okay. half. Two, it's, it's two and she years. was like very successful before that. She was very that. successful okay. before that. She's big on YouTube. She's done a lot of like recording collabs. Um, yeah. She, she, she was successful as a musician before that and then built this course. And I yeah. think that's like what I was just like, well, I joined this course because I saw you be successful. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that is a little weird that she, and she's not open to like, discussion or like one-on-one -on -one feedback really there's no one one-on-one -on -one feedback. Oh, okay like that I said, seems it's, like a shame it's mm -hmm. it's once a month she's available for like an hour so if you want live questions answered you have to be on facebook for that hour and it's all text and which you know i'm i rarely can make that specific mm -hmm. time and you can always post questions but there's no guarantee that she'll actually see it um, or respond to it. You're only guaranteed that one hour a month. And as far as like then comprehensive of like, okay, well, here's everything that I've tried or, hey, can you take a listen to what I'm doing and maybe say what might not be working or things like that? Yeah, that's just not, mm -hmm. not there. And like other members will, will chime in. But again, the people who have had some sex success with it don't ever come back to the group to help new members mm. or pe like people on the same level can't help grow each other yeah because you're all at the same level like I've done a collab with someone but like she's a little bit bigger than me and I got a little bit but like she didn't get anything out of it and like I did the collab it was fun not I'll definitely plug it you know mm -hmm. I'll, I'll leave a link and the cards there too for that collab because that was a fun one but like it's not the same as if if someone larger were to help with the collab, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and as far as the course thing goes, like, I just, like, yes, a course can diversify your income. And it depends on where you're at in your career, one. it And also, um, it shouldn't be treated, like, Making a course and building the infrastructure to then run it and scale it is its own business. Yes. And like, and that's like the terrifying thing for me. It's like, I don't want to do customer service in a Facebook group when I could be writing music. Like, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. And that's and, the other thing. Like, building a course is no small feat. Yeah. That it, takes time uh -huh. and energy. And that takes time away from what you at least for me i want to be creating music so why would i stop creating music to create a course for my very tiny audience mm -hmm. when that's not ultimately what i signed up to do i signed up to create yeah. music so why would i take time off of creating music to make a course when i'm not when i haven't even proven myself successful i'm not making any mm -hmm. type of living off of yeah. what i'm doing right now like i i mean at this point i've made 300 dollars in two years from my music streaming oh and that's because um, i had one song take off on amazon and uh, that's it. so today <laughs> this is, this, i will go back to my thought but speaking of streaming costs uh the, this is the one year anniversary of me putting my album out and over the course of that year, um, on Bandcamp, I made back the cost of production. On all of the streaming platforms combined, I have made $20. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because, fun fact, friends, uh, it takes about 300 streams to get a dollar um, of Spotify revenue. So unless you're a weirdo who streams an album on repeat, just buy the album and then stream it on repeat, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and you also don't see that money for three to four months, exactly. which is another thing that I don't know if that's how it works in the author world, but like for music streaming services, it can take three to four months for you to even know how well your song is doing. So like, you don't even get instant feedback. It's like, that's what I was so surprised. Like I released Animal Crossing at the end of March and like July was the first big influx of pay. So from the end of March to July, did I even realize like how much, how well that song did. And even then it was like, 
it was like 50 bucks which mm. i mean yay for a song that i ended up doing in like a week off the cuff because i was finishing up my album i was just like oh yeah i should probably do an animal crossing song this won't be too yeah. bad it'll be fun um because like i was in like the very end of my album production like it was just promotion at that point i was like oh yeah i could do this real quick and that ended up being my most successful song but like you don't even know how well it does you don't even get mm -hmm. access to the money for four months yeah so well, and and going back to the the course thought um as far as um what 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 also as far as it being a, a source of income i think it, it also should be communicated in the marketing like that if you are in a place where you have a day job and you are building this business on the side building a course and then leaning into that course when it's successful would be a valid plan if you are in a place where you are in a pandemic and are underemployed and are just trying to hustle for clients uh building a course is a project you could do but it's not necessarily gonna give you that influx of money right away and i think um as i've been exploring what what marketing i'm sensitive to and sort of and and personal neurodivergence and whatnot it's just like musicians in general uh are all kind of squirrely and we're all gonna be just and, and be distracted by shiny things and the, the you need to if you're marketing to musicians you need to ethically communicate what is a now problem <laughs> like <laughs> i just i really wish and I, at the end of the day you're trying to make money but like you gotta ethically communicate what is a now problem because they might not know what is a now problem yeah. <laughs> you know um if that makes sense um <laughs> yeah definitely so yeah. yeah i just i i i guess like the whole like after hearing savvy's video the whole thing was it, it like it was immediately i watched savvy's video and then like later that day my friend posted about how like you know, I've been, you know, is anyone who started this within the past, like, couple years actually making money? And there were a couple people who were like, oh, yeah, I found, you know, success live streaming. And I was just like, okay, well, I know how you found success because you got lucky and got rated by a couple of larger people. I've been streaming for four years and nowhere near am I making money. And I, I think I have a decent stream quality. I mean, I haven't, my entire basement is my studio, like... I've invested you money You do have into a very it. good quality. I like <laughs> your, you. your quality is fantastic, yeah. Like, I've invested, which I can only do because my husband works full time and works a good enough job that we have spare cash that we could, over the years, and you know, improve stuff. So it's like, it's not like I'm streaming on bad quality stuff. I put on a good production, but like, I still am not wildly successful. It takes a lot to get yeah. successful. Like for me, I think a lot of people look at my YouTube channel and they think that I am just successful, but I'm like, dude, no, you don't know like how much I did. Like a lot of people don't realize how old some of my videos on my channel are. They don't see like that. I did, I made three videos a week on YouTube for a whole year before I even qualified to be monetized. And it was like a lot of work. And I think that nobody realizes that it took a long time of like trying to find which topics people really care about and trying to see what, what, uh, how many uploads a week people care about and how many things people want on live streams and like constant audience feedback and things like that. It took a lot. And I know some creators who have been at it longer than me and haven't reached where I am. And I know creators who have been at it shorter than me and have 10 times the subscribers I have. And it's, so there's an element of luck sometimes. There's an element of, uh, sometimes there's an element of privilege of how much time you can afford to spend on it. And if you're working other jobs on top of it and stuff like that, there's just so many different factors that go into things. That's why I always have these problem with courses that don't offer the audience or the student to teacher feedback because mm -hmm. There's, there's not one way that's going to work for everybody. There's not, there's so many different circumstances and factors and not to mention different industries and different categories and even success on YouTube, success on YouTube in the book sphere versus success on YouTube in like the makeup sphere is going to be different. It's going to be completely different and things yeah. like that. That's why I almost, this is what I was talking about in this past Friday's video I put out is like, 
There's something to reading memoirs that I like even more than self-help books or reading memoirs that I like even more than self-help books or courses or things like that because I'd rather read like a hundred books of different people telling me exactly what they did even if it's not applicable to me rather than one book of someone trying really hard to make their story applicable to everyone and as a result providing me no details because i can learn if i read a hundred different people's memoirs i'm going to learn something from them even if it's not going to change my whole life but when you combine it you've learned a bunch of different things then that you can try out as opposed to if you read one book that's uh trying to give you a big overview of all these things it's it's gonna it might all fall flat or it might none of it might work because they're it's too generalized so that's why that's my advice to everyone read lots of memoirs or yeah. read lots of books that go really in depth into one person's life and what they specifically did and things like that that's yeah. good advice that's not something that you would i don't think i've he ever heard anyone else say that so oh really yeah. <laughs> that again the disclaimer that's what worked for that's what yeah. worked for me so far like i did this video just yesterday where i'm reviewing dave grohl's book and i'm like i think i'm reading this book and then i've been reading all month all these other self-help books by different daves this one's the one that helped me the most even though it's not a self-help book because it's someone telling me stories of what explicitly happened in their life and that's going to motivate me to want to make things happen in my life because i'm seeing like how you visualize results and made them happen instead of just this vague advice from dave hollis like uh, untether your ship from the dock and go out into the seas and and face the storm and it's like okay this doesn't mean anything bud this doesn't mean anything yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah 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 well and that's and that's my experience with memoirs as well is that there is that uh that you do connect with them a lot more and you do see how all the pieces come together and i think mm -hmm. where we can fall into these 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 pits is like really it it is it is a slow steady process and and there is some advice of like just celebrating the people who are in the room celebrating the people who are showing up and and engaging with them and hoping and hoping they engage more people like and that's how i try to look at it but also you don't like it is it's also very valid to yell about the things that aren't working right yes. like yeah. like you like you want to do the thing where you're like oh man well p imagine those 40 people that listen to your song were in your living room right now that'd be a cool party but also it's okay to want more people to listen to it you know oh yeah. absolutely um and and what's helpful for me is is to look at it it's just like okay what is the data let's take the numbers and not attach them to feelings which is a thing i learned from amplify <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> i tried to be cooler? rational and logical <laughs> <laughs> um but but also um within that too like authentic coaching is is coaching that's like hey things suck and also let's let's unpack that instead of yeah like, you just gotta think happy thoughts you know so and i think that's what's lacking from a lot of courses is the acknowledgement because mm -hmm. i feel like sometimes people who are successful make these courses and think that like if i just tell everyone else how to do it they're also going to be successful without realizing either some of what made them successful was timing you know, starting a YouTube channel 10 years ago was a lot easier to build fans than it is starting now. Yeah. Um, or, uh, or some of it is just like, okay, well, because you five years ago had a huge subscriber base, presented you with different opportunities that are no longer available now, they don't really acknowledge the, the starting now. Mm -hmm. And what it's actually like starting from zero that's what i see a lot of like these success stories kind of gloss over is the person who's starting now who has zero fans who has zero equipment or has you know mm -hmm. or just very minimal stuff and what what those challenges are today because they're different from when you started five years ten years ago and and kind of forcing those, you have to just think happy thoughts. Just keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing yourself harder. And it's like, okay, well, I, I have two kids. I literally, I take them to school. I come home, I work, I pick them up. It's dinner time. And then either I keep working or my husband comes home from his day job and he keeps working. And like, there's only so many hours in the day 
to get stuff done. And at some point, just saying work harder or keep pushing isn't helpful and it isn't enough. What I think needs to be talked about more is how do you continue to be on that grind without burning yourself out? That's true. Yeah. Yeah, Because that's where I'm at right now. Because I'm at the point where I was told by not only my husband, but one of my good art friends who I... I Not your bad art friend. Not my bad art friend. My good (laughs) art friend. Um, (laughs) I I admin for her. So, like, we we talk frequently. We've gotten to know each other over the past two years. And even she's just like, Katie, it's it's time to just take a step back for a couple of days. Mm Mm-hmm. And just do nothing music related. Other, I practice because I taste. I still take flute lessons. I'm. I've been playing for twenty years, and I still take private lessons. That's so awesome. You're continuing yeah. to work. Like I love that. Always be learning, dude. I love and, it. And and that's part of it because I did not go to music school. I went to school for engineering because I did the responsible thing and not be a musician. I went to be an engineer. But one day I will tell my story. But today is not that day because that's a long story. Mm. But. So because I feel like I didn't have the learning that a lot of musicians got from going to music school that I kind of have to make up for it now with lessons. Anyway, side tangent, I, I, I rant a lot. Um, I, it was, I was like, I was told you have to stop because if you don't take a break, you will want to just quit everything and you will just quit everything because I can, I can be like that. If I, I can take a lot, but once I reach my ending point, then all bets are off. So, you know, two very important people in my life were like, Katie, you're, we see that you're about to throw in the towel and we know you don't want to because this has been your dream since you were young. Take the week. Mm-hmm. Nothing major is going to happen within a week. Yeah. <laughs> so I've had that experience where like, there'll be times that if I notice myself getting in a certain uh, thought spiral where I'll be like, okay, my books are not selling super well this month and all my events have been canceled because of the pandemic. And I don't know how to market these books and I have my YouTube channel and that's great. But oh my God, now the thought of making and editing all these videos is suddenly stressing me out. And I know that objectively, these are all things I love to do but for some reason every single one of them stresses me out and then i think about working on a different one of them and that stresses me out Mm. and then i say okay wait hold on do i just need to take a nap and then if i think that and i realize yes i should just take a nap then i take a nap or i just like go to sleep or i just sleep extra if i sleep extra and then the next day it's all better Sometimes you just need to sleep. (laughs) Like I sleep a lot. I'm really into sleeping. I've always heard these stories and I'm glad that people are kind of getting away from those stories now, but of like, oh, I was running a business while working a day job, while raising these kids, while doing this. And I slept three to four hours a night. And I'm like, no, 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 no. People like look at my schedule and they're like, do you ever sleep? I'm like, yeah, usually eight to 10 hours a night minimum. Usually like, yeah, I sleep a lot, dude. And I sometimes nap on top of that because if you don't sleep, you're not going to have the energy to do all this. And you are going to suddenly think that every single thing is stressing and weighing on your head. No sleep, do lots of sleep, sleep as much as you want. <laughs> Just sleep yep. a ton. Yes. Yep. 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 Uh, there's uh, so there's, this is not me talking, guys. I, this is me talking about another coach I like. Oh, <laughs> that's my No, dude, the fact that you have some good coaches to recommend yeah, yeah, yeah. is awesome. Yes, I love absolutely. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Suzanne Pulaski of uh, the Rockstar Advocate, who is also, like, really good friends with Cheryl, and they, like, go to conferences together, and it's just like, yay, you're amazing <laughs> people. Uh, but she has, um, and she has, like, a whole planner for musicians and stuff like that, but her philosophy is when you look at your calendar, you schedule your self-care days first, that's, oh, that's a good idea out, to schedule it first. Your, you block out your eight hours of sleep. You schedule your self care first, and then you schedule in when you're and and then like your day job stuff, and then when you're gonna work, and also yeah. like your personal stuff. But you actually like look at your calendar and like block out your breaks first. <laughs> yeah, I have like plenty of days where I'm like. I'm really exhausted right now. Is it only 11 in the morning? Yes, but do I have any meetings or any places I have to be scheduled at for the next three hours? No. Okay, then I will take a nap. And there's like, there's no reason not to. It's like, yeah, in your mind, you're like, I have all this stuff that I have to get done and I'm gonna have to get it done later. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have a better time and an mm-hmm. easier time getting it done later if you're not feeling like you're gonna fall asleep the whole time. So that's my best advice to everyone, sleep. <laughs> you gotta sleep. It's important. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and 
the other the the thing that like uh Suzanne always says in her stuff in in her uh stuff is like you do not have the same 24 hours that Beyonce has because Beyonce has a team <laughs> yes yes once you're famous you have a different 24 hours than everyone else yes. you have people that you can pay to help save you time on things yes <laughs> that's that's it the, but it, that's a good thing to make a goal like when do yeah. you want to start being able to hire people when do you want to start budgeting for that and that's mm-hmm. the thing to start thinking about yeah yeah Yeah. no absolutely Absolutely. yeah and yeah and i think that's not talked about for people who do most of the stuff themselves like Mm -hmm. i i do have a producer who i work with occasionally but i haven't had the chance to sit down and send him anything to work on because i'm too busy trying to market everything and social Mm -hmm. media and kids and boy kids take up a lot of time that's what i hear i feel bad giving people advice a lot of time because i don't have kids and so when i'm like if someone has kids i'm like your life is already has so much more that you have to manage in there that i don't so i I can't even give you advice because like the fact that and people ask me savvy how do you do all this because i don't have kids like that is a big part of it but i can't give that as advice because it's like well one either you already have kids or two it's not up to me to decide what you do with your life so (laughs) it's like that but that does that does help a lot Yeah, yeah and i i think like for me is i had kids before i decided to do all of this yeah like my you know i started really going hard at the music stuff in 20 2019 yeah 2019 gosh i don't even remember anymore Mm -hmm. and at that point my kids were like let's see were eight and six so Mm -hmm. like i've already had kids and they were you know they were like preschool age and you know school age and so many people who are successful usually wait to have kids they're successful have a lot of money then have kids and exactly. then hire help out um i do not have a nanny i am a primarily a stay-at-home mom so who is getting up with the kids to make sure they get to school me who's taking time out to pick pick them up from school me who then has to cook dinner me who has to take them to karate me and i say me because not that my husband's not involved but he works 12 to 13 hours a day right exactly he's, yeah. he's up at 4 45 and doesn't usually get home until 5 30 or 6 p.m at night and that's on a good day sometimes things go late and he's not home until much later than that so it falls on me just because like it, it does because he's at work and that's what is paying the bills and that takes priority so like i can't hire someone to go sit at karate for two hours because we don't have the money for that so yeah right. that's two hours i could be working but like no and then then after all of that is you know bedtime routine actually sitting and spending time with the kids because hanging out with them they're pretty cool you know but like all of that stuff takes up time and then i you know when i look at my schedule i don't have eight hours a day to work i might have two hours here 45 minutes here another hour here and when you're like in the middle of composing or arranging Mm -hmm. sometimes it takes you a half hour just to even get in the mindset of okay where did i leave off and what was i doing even with the best of notes and then by that point you're like all right well i have 20 minutes to actually further this along and yeah that sometimes that just you know, there's not a lot of people who are doing what I do and in my position. And if they are, they're not really talking about it. And that's kind mm-hmm. of like what I try to talk about is like, it's hard. It's and hard. It, yeah. 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 It's just hard. And there's not enough acknowledgement that, yeah, I can't grind for 10 hours a day to try to make this music thing work because I don't have 10 hours a day mm-hmm. to solely work on this. I just don't. No, I get it. I get it completely. And with those little, like, little blocks of time, like, I find it, it's, 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 it's helpful to just, like, take a project and just be like, okay, I'm not going to get this whole track. I'm going to lay this melody line. And that's what I'm going yeah. to do here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and, and just having to, to divide it into smaller chunks and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, it is, I, I, I also don't have uh, kids. I am in a place where uh, I am building my career in in an intentional way, so that by the time I do, I can juggle proper. I can juggle, mm-hmm. uh, 
but um which is a weird thing to schedule in a five-year plan but anyway um but i i have recently started like working more uh more of a full-time job during the week and so it's just like okay i have three hours <laughs> of project work that i can do <laughs> and yeah, <envy> that yeah <laughs> and, and then just three hours. <laughs> yeah uh if you add it all up so uh so then i and then you just gotta divide it up from there but it's also it's hard when you're just like how do we do that and there are definitely yeah. groups that do talk about the nitty-gritty of how to how to divide it all out but yes on the surface the industry is very much like how to do all the things dm all your friends so they can pre-save your stuff <laughs> you know who has so. time for that i don't have time for that no i don't either <laughs> you're assuming that my friends actually care about what i do most of them don't. My own parents don't really hmm. get or support what I do. So, yeah. oh, I'm sorry to hear that because that's the thing too. That's why I say <laughs> there's a privilege element that comes into this. I'm very fortunate that my mom has been so supportive of everything I've wanted to do from the beginning. Like yeah. my mom, when I said, "Hey, mom, do you want to start a book and plushy business together?" She was like, "Yeah, that sounds great." My <laughs> mom, like, sometimes will call me up and be like, "Savvy, I'm sorry I haven't been able to see your videos for the last couple of weeks, but I've had health problems." And I'm like, "Why are you apologizing to me?" <laughs> Mom, I love you. Just, you need to focus on yourself. Like, but no, I would say that there, that is something I'm very fortunate with because I do know a lot of people whose parents have not been supportive of their careers yeah. or, and even, I, I, even if it's not like financial support, just having my mom's emotional support or just knowing that if I say, hey, mom, I need a, a favor to help me with this, this thing that I'm doing for my job, that she'll do it. And like, if I say, hey, mom, I need, can you come to this event with me and we can work it together? She'll say yes and things like that. So there that's something i'm very grateful for so i always shout out my mom and all my acknowledgments and everything because i mean like, that is great but usually in the chat in the morning my mom comes in nice. our chat I in the morning it. a lot of times yeah she's great so it's like there's definitely something to be said for like having your family being supportive of you and encouraging you and what you do makes a massive difference and i don't think yeah. it's talked about enough because when you don't have that it, it, it you definitely feel it when you don't have yeah. it yeah i mean my parents have sometimes taken the kids for the weekend so that we can film videos but i mean like well, that's good it's yeah. the grandkids so of course like yeah <laughs> they're, they're happy to do like it doesn't yeah. happen enough in their opinion but i mean with covid and pandemic yeah. and i limit them I mean, I mean, it's only an hour away, but it's still out of state and crossing state lines and stuff like that. I'm just like, my kids aren't old enough to be vaccinated, so we're not really messing with that. So it hasn't really happened yeah. as much. I mean, COVID throws a wrench into the whole thing, yes, too. It's absolutely. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. COVID has messed it up for a lot of people. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but I mean, so like they would, you know, occasionally, I think like last year, like as as things were kind of letting up a little bit they took the kids for two days and like we went into the middle of nowhere pennsylvania and filmed like four music videos over oh that's days. awesome just uh but i mean like that's the extent of the support but like they would do that regardless if it was because we wanted to film music videos they would just do because they like the grandkids type of thing but like yeah. other than that like my parents don't really care they didn't encourage me ever going into music as a career path they were way more proud of me being an engineer and well look where that turned out but um i'm very fortunate in the fact that my husband is super supportive and he's half partner he does a lot of music production he he does a lot of video editing like he you know we we do a lot of things collaboratively and he's sometimes the one that's like pushing me because he's like you can't quit he's like i'm not gonna let you quit because i know you want this too much um so he's kind of like the one that is just he's like i know it's hard it's okay we'll get through this and i'm just like but you work so much and then you come home and work on all of this and he's like it's fine because i like doing this i'm not gonna do it if i don't like it so i'm very fortunate that he is that supportive and like i said he works a job that you know provides us with enough income to take care of our basics and you know some of this other stuff because equipment is not cheap and yeah. st renting studio space is even more expensive so it's mm -hmm. just easier and more conducive to having a family because like i can record at 10 o'clock at night if i need to can't do that if i go to a studio so like you know but having the necessary equipment you know was an investment and 
you know, we, like I said, as we get a little bit of extra money or a bonus money comes in or like Christmas money comes in, we're just like, okay, well, now might be a good time to upgrade lighting or now might be a time to like, oh, you know, we built a new computer upstairs so that like he can work and I can work. We can both have two computers going because, you know, a Surface Pro is not enough to edit videos. <laughs> yeah that's the thing too dude is uh i need to have a desktop pc to work on for everything yeah. it's like people who do everything on like an apple laptop i'm like what are you doing like not in a bad way like i'm <laughs> admiring that you're capable of this but like or people who try to do stuff on their phone i'm like what are you doing i have a two monitor desktop pc with a massive tower over here and that's the only way i can work on things katie mm. uh before i have to yeah. go in a minute i wanted to ask you do you have yeah. microphone recommendations? I want to upgrade my microphone. I feel like I want to have some a better microphone for this. So picture. I use an Audio Technica. That's the one I'm currently using. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it's not a USB one. It, okay. You have to have like an audio interface mm -hmm. box with it. Okay. Um, so if you want better microphones, you have to go with a box and a, like an audio box that then audio is box. that okay. yeah. you but USB is into your computer. So the audio box yeah. USB connects to the computer and the microphone connects to the audio box. Yes. Yeah, yeah, is that yeah. what you have too, Gail? Yeah, I have, okay. I have a, well, I have a Rode, my mic has a Rode and then it goes into, uh, I have a, a Focusrite um, interface. So it does have two ports, which means if you had somebody else, you know, you wanted to hook up a mic to, you could, you could hook up two mics. I mean, I also could so. potentially connect the mic to the camera. That could be a thing yeah. I could do too. But yeah. I, I like the, I, cause I have, I've been using this, this one for like four years and i think i should probably upgrade at this point if you're gonna upgrade go with an audio interface and get like a real microphone like okay. that would be the next upgrade and you can get ones that are not expensive i use a task cam it has two ports i bought two ports because i was streaming with my sister when we first started so we had two microphones going because we were sitting on opposite mm -hmm. sides of the living room because we used to stream video games in my living room um <laughs> yeah, that's awesome uh, yeah and then like this is the one that i use mostly now for streaming it's good for the occasional vocals that happen usually it's my daughter that's doing vocals because you don't want to hear me sing and then like i have a mic that i have a ribbon mic specifically for flute because from the research we did at the time ribbon mics were better for a flute recording but awesome guys i unfortunately have to go if you but... thank you so much Sabby, yeah for of course stopping by um like yeah. i said your video kind of prompted this whole that's awesome thank you for that inviting me to do it with... <laughs> thank you for watching this first part of the video and like i said thank you savvy for coming in and having this discussion with gail and i part two will be up soon and i will leave a link in the description when it, it is available as well as a link in the cards but Gail and I continue our conversation over in part two. So yeah, if this was very interesting to you, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Leave a comment below on what you thought. Have you taken any courses? What were your experiences? Are you a musician trying to, you know, make it in this cutthroat world? I would love to hear from you. Follow me on all of my social media so you know what I am up to. And I will catch you in, the, in part two. Take care. Thank you.